Good morning, friends. Yesterday, in my last lecture, I spoke to you something about comedy. What comedy is? Try to define it in many different ways, and I even spoke about the various types of it. First one that I had explained was the romantic comedy. Today, I'll be explaining the remaining ones. In the second place, we have the satiric comedy. The satiric comedy attacks the disorders of the society by ridiculing those who violate the standards and morals and manners. In Walpole and the Alchemist by Ben Jonson, Shakespeare's contemporary, the greed and ingenuity of one or more highly intelligent but rascally swindlers and the equal greed but stupid gullibility of their victims are made grotesquely ludicrous rather than lightly amusing. Both these satiric comedies and un end unhappily for the rogues or protagonists, the comic effect is sustained. However, because these personages have been rendered in such a way as to repent rather than engage our sympathies. In the third place is the comedy of manners. This form of dramatic genre deals with intrigues and relations of ladies and gentlemen living in a polished and sophisticated society and relies for comic effect in greater part on the wit and sparkle of the dialogue, often in the form of repartee, a witty conversational give and take, which constitutes a kind of verbal fencing match and to a lesser degree on the ridiculous violations of the social conversations and decorum by stupid or nonsense characters such as the would-be wits, jealous husbands and popish dandies. Popish dandies. This form was earlier used by Shakespeare in Love's Labour Lost and Much Ado About Nothing and was polished in the restoration, highly in the restoration comedies. We find its use in the restoration dramatists, particularly in Convives the Way of the World and by Calais the Country Wife, which are its exact excellent examples. A middle class reaction against the immoral immorality of the situation and frequent indecency of dialogue in the Portly Restoration Committee gave birth to sentimental comedy of the 18th century. Writers like Oliver Goldsmith in She Stoops to Conquer and his contemporary Richard Sheridan in The Rivals and She and The School for Scandal revived the pitch and gaiety but deleted the indecency of the restoration comedy. This comedy of manners lapsed in the early 19th century but revived later by many skillful practitioners from Pinero and Oscar Wilde in The Importance of Being Earnest to TV Shop, Somerset, Mong and Citra writers of that era. In the fourth place, I will take Farce, which is a type of comedy designed to provoke the audience to simple, hearty laughter, that is, or belly laughs in the common balance of theatre. To make the people laugh, farce uses such types of characters that are highly exaggerated or caricature, puts them into the improbable and eureka situations and freely uses verbal humor and physical cosplays. Earlier, farce, farce acted as a component in the comic episode in the medieval miracle plays such as the Wakefield plays, Noah and Second Shepherd. In the English drama, farce is usually an episode about the scenes in Shakespeare who episode in a more complex form of comedy. For example, the knockout knockabout scene in Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew and the Merry Bites of Windsor. More examples of it are few one readers as well as some full length cinemas by comedians like Charlie Chaplin, 
WC fields, etc. Presently, farce is used mainly in single scenes of musical reviews and a standard fare in television comedy. Next comes the high and low comedy. A great distinction is made between the two. High comedy evokes intellectual laughter or thoughtful laughter from the spectators who remain emotionally detached from the action at the sight of folly, pretentiousness and incongruity in human behavior. The best example of this high comedy is George Meredith's classical essay, The Idea of Comedy in 1877. Meredith finds its highest form within the comedy of manners in the wit combats, sometimes identified, identified as the love duels, between such intelligent, sophisticated, highly verbal and well-matched well lovers as Benedict and Beatrice in Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing and Mirabel and Milament in On Reeves, The Way of the World. As far as low comedy is concerned, it makes little or no intelligent intellectual appeal, but thus arouse laughter by jokes or gags, and by slapstick humor or boisterous or clownish physical activity, the most, which are the most common components of farce. Next, I would like to discuss about the comedy of humors. Ben Johnson, the Elizabethan playwright, was the first one to conceive and popularize this dramatic genre during the later 16th century. It is based on the ancient but still current physiological theory of four humors. The term humor derives from the Latin word humor meaning liquid. Now this, these humors were held to be the four primary fluids in the human body. Blood, phlegm, choler, or yellow bile as it is known, and melancholy or the black bile, whose temperament or mixture determined the physical state as well as the character type of a man. Now this theory explains that the balance of these liquids in human body made him healthy or kept him healthy, but an imbalance if in any or one or the other humor is in the temperament was said to produce four kinds of dispositions whose names have survived the underlying theory sanguine from Latin sanguine that is blood, phlegmatic, choleric and melancholy. In Johnson's comedy of humors, all the four major characters, instead of being well balanced individuals, they have a preponderant humor that gives them a particular distortion or eccentricity of disposition. Johnson expounded his theory in his induction to his play Every Man in His Humor and exemplified this mode in his later comedies as well. Now I'll be discussing a little more, a little about sentimental comedy and tragical, tragic comedy. In sentimental comedy, it contains both comedy as well as sentimental tragedy. This genre appeared in literature, literary circles as a reaction of the middle class against the obscenity and indecency of the restoration comedy of manners. This form, which incorporates the scenes with the extreme emotions, evokes excessive pity became popular among the middle class audience in the 16th century. Last but not the least, tragic comedy. This dramatic genre, as the name suggests, contains both tragic and comic elements. It blends both the elements to lighten the mood of the overall play. Often tragic comedy is a serious play, but that ends happen. That's all for now. Thank you. In my next lecture, I'll be coming up with much more elements. Then, goodbye.